How's it going, everyone? I'm here today to talk about one of my least favorite places in World of Warcraft, Trasheran. And I brought Dalaran along with me for a little bit of a counter point of view. Dalaran's always been very, very optimistic and energetic about Asheran. Lately, his optimism's been waning. I'm the complete opposite. I've been trashing Asheran for quite some time, never liked the place, not even in the beta, and lately after a series of changes, I'm warming up to it just a little bit. Be sure to go check out Dalaran's channel. He does some very interesting rogue content. Sometimes he takes something very simple and finds a way to show it in a situation that can be game-breaking, and also he, he takes very complicated things about rogues and he breaks them down into simple terms. He's always pumping out different how-to videos about the rogue class, whether it be sub combat or assassination and gives people pointers I should say on PvP tips whether it's arena or BG so go check out Dalaran's channel the link is in the description Luxley is a uh, he's just he's a guy like me on YouTube that plays World of Warcraft and trying to expand to other videos does commentary talks about the game PvPs so and has really strong and I think great opinions about different topics lots of food for thought Great videos. I've been watching him ever since I had, uh, you know, grew to a thousand subscribers. So that's been just to tell you guys uh, in the video how long that's been for a while. So definitely check him out. Yeah, we've, we've been we've below. been in touch for well over probably over a year and a half right now. Yeah, and I used your uh, the line. Thanks for playing. Yeah. <laughs> say, say the lion. Just, there we go. It's that's so good. my line. Today's video and reason I have Luxy here is we're going to dissect Ashran. Uh, and the question is it failing? Recently, Blizzard in patch 6.2, uh, on July 24th, patch 6.2, I think 0 at the moment. Yeah, 0. Uh, they're moving the 200 conquests from Ashran. They are allowing conquest vendors to sell the non set specific gear. So the gear versus versatility, extra multi strike, extra crit, the kind of stuff that like a, um, a Death Knight or a Warrior would invest into. No, definitely. And the that's, question, that's preferred for PvP uh, for most yeah. classes, absolutely. Like, uh, a subtlety rogue would do the same thing. Um, the question, I guess, is with the removal of 200 conquest cap from Ashran, is Ashran dead? Yes. Or is it dying, or is it useless? Dead. Dead? Dead. 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 Looking for an Undertaker, dead. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I guess the question behind it is lots of people would say that, hey, you know, they, they stuck the 200 conquest cap from Ashran alone to force people into Ashran, because they're thinking, like, we don't really like going to Ashran. So they thought, well, lots of people have complained that you're behind, like, oh, Blizzard's forcing you, because they're forcing you to get a 200x conquest. While 200 doesn't sound a lot, over weeks, it really does accumulate. After five weeks, you have a thousand extra, you get your weapons qu slightly quicker, you get your gear slightly uh, ahead of the curve of everybody else, and... That that's what p people didn't like. They thought you you know should be free to go to Ashran to farm whatever you need, or just you know peace out of there or do your own thing if you don't feel like doing Ashran. And so, you, you, do you really think it's going to be dead? Like nobody's going to go. I mean, I know Alliance is not really going to go there, but well, I mean the the players that are going to go. I mean, it's probably the quickest and best experience to gear up a new tune. Yeah, especially if you're stealth like a druid or a rogue i mean it, it's a great thing to do uh, you can get around you don't have to worry about getting ganked etc cetera, etc cetera. so that that will still have its place but as we progress on in the patch less and less people are going to be gearing up i i really do i i i believe it's going to be dead i i don't see what what's the incentive to go there i i don't I, while they've made it better than it initially was it mm -hmm. i still don't like it you know, when Blizzard first introduced Asheran, I was one of those people that didn't like the idea. I was just kind of like, no. Uh -uh. But I kind of felt it was somehow going to be the worst of Wintergrasp and the worst of Tolbarod wrapped up into one. But they made a promise. They said old school AV. And when you say that, PvPers just get excited. It's like someone saying, hey, buddy, I'm going to hook you up with Jennifer Lawrence. And when they actually deliver it, it's not Jennifer Lawrence. It's Janet Reno. Now, if you don't know who Janet Reno is, you could Google it, and you, I'm, I guarantee you'll laugh because I think I hit the point on the head. I, whether or not Asheran is good is is a, is someone's preference or someone's, you know, what it is they like dislike. But the fact of the matter is, it's really not what people expected. Uh, I, I, you might, it might have missed your expectations, but. Uh, some people might still think it's good. Some people might think it's really bad. I'm in the really bad. I think Dalaran, you think it's it's good, right? You do like it. I, I like it. Yeah, I kind of do. And and I have to admit, 
I, I, one of the classes that I geared through there recently was Rogue. And like I said, I, I think it's a lot easier for like a Rogue or a Druid, two classes with stealth, to make their way around there. If you're not stealth, you don't have that, oh my god, what am I going to do to get out of shit? You know, like, oh, there's a group of Horde, what am I going to do? Group of Alliance, what am I going to do? Yeah, there's nothing, you, you, you have to stand there and take it. And if you're a Horde, I mean, if, I'm sorry, if you're a Rogue or you're a Druid, you, you could avoid some of that, probably the majority of that. So I could see as a Rogue or a Druid, as somebody with stealth, that, to, to get your way around there, I, I could see it as an asset, I could see it as being very fun. But... Uh, for straight up melee classes or straight up casters or healer, I don't know if it's as fun. I mean, do you think that that's a reasonable point? Yeah, I, I agree. It's just the way I played rogue. I never really been the stealth guy. I usually am the guy leading Ashram groups. I'm the guy up ahead. I'm playing combat, blade flurry, cleaving everything I can. Because I, as much as I would like to say play stealth class, I definitely see benefit of it. It's just my experience have been completely different from what majority of players has been. Uh, right. I mean, I, I mean I, I, yours. you primarily play a, a combat rogue, which is yeah. a stand-in-your-face kind of rogue. So it's a little bit different. You know, the, I think if you took all the rogues in a room, I think the majority of them would be one of the other two specs just simply because it's two versus one. Yeah. So uh, I think – and the same thing with druids. I mean, even whether you're a balanced druid, resto druid – Guardian Druid or Feral Druid. I mean, the bottom line is you can walk around stealth. You, you, mm -hmm. you know, if you're a Night Elf, you don't even add a con you know, Shadow Meld add a combat stealth. Problem mm -hmm. solved. But um, I, I do admit, I mean, I've always been very critical of Asherin. I never really liked it. I didn't like, you, you know, ha being forced to go there for that extra 200 conquests. And quite honestly, I never did. Mm -hmm. Because I could easily spend an hour, two or three hours there and not win and not, you know, not, not, not be in a good group and not get those events. And anything that has a huge RNG factor to it is very unappealing to me in World of Warcraft. That's a big reason why I don't raid. Mm -hmm. And I, I hate that because the problem, like, I had that problem back in Cata where I played in Affliction Lock. My guild broke up. My RBG guild broke up. One guy died. Two, two people were dating. They broke up. Big fight. You know, everybody just went their separate way. That's, that's a lot of shit. Actually. Oh, it was. It was amazing. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a psychologist's dream. Trust me. I dated the GM. That was another bad idea. But I'm telling you, it was like a major drama. It was hysterical. But everybody just went their separate way. And mm -hmm. I'm knocking on the door in 1900, and I wanted to get into another group. I couldn't get in. I, I, I'm sitting here, 1884, you know, you know, CR. I, you know, I was very good at affliction lock. I, I just couldn't get in. Why? Because I didn't have cunning of the cruel. If you were in affliction lock, it didn't matter if you had the LFR version, the regular version, the uh, heroic version. They just wanted a caster with cunning of the cruel. Because, and and in some ways, I don't blame them. But they would rather take a guy who was a 1200 affliction lock with cunning of the cruel rather than me. And I did everything possible to try to get that trinket. And I think out of 140 potential boss drops that it drops on, Relic, Regular, LOR, it dropped three times. One time I rolled in 96, somebody else rolled in 99. And I had to buy a new mouse. So, <laughs> so I, 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 I hate anything to do with RNG. In, in, in World of Warcraft. And when they throw in, they threw in that better gear with the versatility into Asheran and they throw that 200 point extra bonus, I, it's really a crapshoot as to whether you're going to get it. You don't have a lot of control. And uh, I've never been for that thing. You know, that's just me. That's my, you know, I like vanilla. You might like chocolate. There's, you know, there's no right or wrong here. That's just not my thing, though. I hate RNG. I, I agree with that. I completely agree with that. Uh, the the RNG factor gets some people just so far ahead, just at random luck chance, while other people like you know just just, just balance the, the whole the whole idea of like you know earning rewards. Like I don't know, I feel like RNG factor sh is fine if it, you earn something bonus, right? Something extra that's not that's not part of the, like you know what's needed, what's required kind of deal. Well, so, I like, yeah, yeah that. It, it's it, but, it can like, like, fit into a niche, 
Yeah. But when it keeps you from progressing in the game, yeah, I got a problem with it, and that's exactly you know what happened to me, and that's a big reason. I mean, I could give you a list of reasons why I don't like rating, and I've tried it; it's just not for me. But I, I just could not progress. I could not. I could not even get a chance. I, I even would tell people like, "Hey, give me a shot." I'm I'm at your CR. I'm not you know not you know I'm not asking to play with a 2400 rated group here. I'm at like 18 uh -huh. 1900. Give me a shot. If I suck, if I don't perform, kick me after one BG. I don't care. Just give me a shot. I know I'll prove myself. No, they want someone with you know who had that trinket, and mm -hmm. there was no there was nothing I could do. I try I tried every possible way to get it, and I couldn't get it. I, I mean, I still. I still go into Dragon Soul for like transmog rounds, and I still have not seen that trinket drop. <laughs> uh, at, that, at that point, you just gotta ask yourself: Does Blizzard hate me? Am oh, I on someone's I, bad yes, list? Yes. <laughs> uh, that's that's what you just have to ask. There's got to be a small chance. It's just like, nope, this guy not getting it. Nope, never. I mean, I always, I never liked the idea of that extra two hundred conquest, just simply because. I remember when I was running RBGs very aggressively in Kata in the beginning of MOP, you we would you know somebody would drop out of the group, usually a tank, you know, then you got to wait like 45 minutes to get a tank because that's the way it was back then, or or a mm -hmm. healer, just something that you couldn't quickly fix, and mm -hmm. you'd be sitting around for 20, 30, 40 minutes waiting for something like that. You didn't have the mechanisms that you have now to expedite it quicker. Waiting and waiting and waiting, and we get somebody. And he'd get his RBG win so he could cap for the week. Thanks, guys. And he'd be gone. And now we're in the same situation again. So yeah. when you force people to do it, it, it becomes a problem. And I, you get people like that. They just want to go in there, get their 200 points, whether it was an RBG in Kata and Mop or it's Asheran, and then they're gone. It's just I got my 200 points. Got to go. And you should do it because you love it. Blizzard... You know, took, we're in a poker game, okay, and they took all their chips, you know, like, push them in the middle, like, Asherad. <laughs> Every single chip, you know? They, mm -hmm. they even they even reached into their pockets, you know, for whatever they could find, you know, mints, whatever it is, just push it in the middle, Asherad. <laughs> and they lost. Nobody nobody wanted to do it. Nobody, mm -hmm. nobody wanted to do it. And part of the reason why I, I do believe was the lag – I think part of the reason why they made a mistake making it kind of a server-based thing. Mm -hmm. And another thing, I, I think the whole concept of it was very murky. As they yeah. refined it with each patch, it got a little bit better. That's the problem. They, they already left a bad taste in everyone's mouths. It's kind of hard to get that out, even if they do refine it. And they did. I mean, I, I think they did refine it. And, and like I said earlier in the video, I was very, very critical of Asheran from day one, from the beta. But I do have to admit, I think they fixed it a little bit. It was kind of like one step up, but two steps back. It was mm -hmm. like one step up, they fixed it, they streamlined it, they they made it uh, more pronounced. You were able to navigate it a bit better, and the lag was gone. And I think they really made it kind of cool, they, borderline cool, you know, like knocking on the door. Hello, can I come in? That kind of mm -hmm. cool. Almost there. Not quite, but almost. But yet... They took two steps back because the queue times went to an hour, mm -hmm. two hours, you know, and you're sitting there like, oh, you know, I want to watch Lord of the Rings. So <laughs> you you watch Lord of the Rings and you're waiting for Asheran, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, Lord of the Ring ends, <laughs> you know, which is a long freaking movie. And then you're just like, oh, look, I'm still in the queue. Well, I think I'm going to watch Two Towers, but before I watch it, I'm going to get popcorn. So you drive in your car, go to the go to the supermarket, get some microwave popcorn, come back, you're still in the queue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So now you're like, all right, I'm gonna watch two towers, but I gotta take a pee. Right? So you gotta take a pee, you go to you leave, you come back, the queue hit, you missed it. True story. <laughs> oh my god, did that happen to me? And I think it's happened to I've heard people, you know, YouTubers that that are PV peers primarily like you and I. That's I think that's happened to everybody at least once. Leave it in the comments if that's true. Exactly, about perfect. Yeah, if, if that happened to you. I know that happened. Not exactly the same thing, but Hayes the DK. He was waiting for an hour, and then it like DC'd him. Yeah. He came back. His his position queue was gone, so then he queued back in, DC'd him after about an hour. Position queue and it's gone again. 
have to get back in. Got in it for the third time. Alliance is losing. So it's like, never lucky. Just never lucky. Yeah, that's what I was saying. One step up or two steps back. And mm-hmm. and I, I think one thing that this move by Blizzard's going to do is really send a very clear and evident message that this thing is insolvable. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> that those are those are my thoughts. What what are your thoughts? I mean, do you think that this is is still gonna thrive? Do you think it's gonna be on on intensive care, borderline well, dead? Well, Ashen is definitely not what it was like back on the beta. I remember <clears> playing that, and that was a blast. It was just like new, so like you know, it wasn't too refined. So it was just it was a cool place. You could summon champions. You could have you know Treezus walking around or the Rock Lobster guy. With the Horde Alliance. Rock Lobsters. That's mm-hmm. that's a band, actually. B-50 yeah, it is. did a song in the 80s. <clears throat> and I think what is fun about it is because everybody's starting like full arena gear. So it was like really just balanced out for the most part. And people wanted to play Alliance and Horde. So it was just like, when it first appeared, everybody just had fun. And I remember just enjoying it. I never had a too, ba- too like terribly bad of an experience with Ashton. I never had like, I wasn't one of those extremes that you know you hear about like, you know, the, the, the hour queue, or, and it's just like, you know, I just leave for five seconds, and the queue pops, and it's gone, and it's like, well, damn. Or it just sees me, like, with with, with a haze. I never had a two, you know, just like this mind-grueling, just waiting experience, and then just, like, never get in. So for me, like, I enjoyed it for the most part. I, I like the idea behind it. I completely understood why people didn't like it, and lag happens, so it was just like, well, it's kind of difficult to get in here, you know. I, I think yeah. it, I, I honestly think that they really didn't have the technology to streamline it as effectively as they wanted to. So, yeah. and, and I think as a result, they – I mean it, it starts to come into focus and that seems to be more and more evident. And I think as a result of that, they knew that and they had to change a few things. And when they changed a few things, I think it made it a bit murky as far as the objectives and what it was about and how they were going to cue people in and mm-hmm. cue people out and – and phasing and all that stuff. So it just, like everything with Watt, it just almost seems like a very rough. You know, you ever, I don't know if you, you if you cook for yourself or whatever, but if you ever had frozen fr- this is so this is so <laughs> out there. But if you ever have like ever make frozen French fries, mm-hmm, yeah. right? And you, you, you know, you read the instructions. You put in, you know, four fifty. I just did this the other day, and and you put put them in, and you put them in the oven four fifty, and you're supposed to keep them in there for like twenty minutes, twenty two minutes, whatever. Well, mm-hmm. everything Blizzard did in Warlords of Draenor is almost like taking those frozen French fries and cooking them for ten minutes, and then eating them, and wondering why they're still half frozen, <laughs> and and that that is just very true with pretty much everything they did. And Wad, with the exception of the leveling experience, that's that's the one one of the few saving graces uh, in in the whole X pack, I believe. Uh, along with the lore, I mean, if you have that ability to suspend your belief and believe in Leprechaun for about five minutes, you mm-hmm. you can kind of buy into into the lore. And and you know, World of Warcraft players, fans are are usually fans of shows like Game of Thrones or. Or Star Trek, or Lord of the Rings, or Star Wars. I almost guarantee someone falls into that oh, mix one way or another. I I happen to like all of them, all the above. Mm-hmm. But when when you when you're a fan of one of those genres or one of those canon, so to speak, franchises, you have that ability to suspend your belief. And I think if you do that for Wad when it comes to the lore, the lore is pretty good. Uh, they yep. kind of got the story back on track where Mop was more or less a culture than a story. Mm-hmm. And this is m- more of a story. Uh, a bit murky, but still a story. you got to suspend your belief a little bit. But that's that's just what. I, they, it, you know, Ashran, it's almost like they just took the fries out a little bit too soon and they're, like, still frozen. Yeah, I mean, it was nice that they were, like, you know, ambitious with, you know, what it could have been. It just... Maybe it's just they just didn't have the manpower, or just you know, just not enough ideas, not enough quick fixes. I mean, with the way it is right now, yeah, you know, you you, you say it's decent. That one's pretty decent, except for the cues, <clears throat> right? The way it is right now in the very end product. You I say admit you, that. You yeah, like I, I do agree with that. Yeah. I, it's gotten better. 
if that's what it was, like, at the very beginning, then people might have been like, hey, I guess this is not that half bad. And, you know, they could have just improved on it. I mean, they added, a, like, a whole new uh, event there. They could have added maybe more mechanics. Some people were talking before about, like, siege engines. If they would have expanded, you know, made it right the first time, expanded on it, instead of having to, like, adjust it and fix it to the way it is now, where it's now it's, like, kind of sort of manageable. I, like I said before, left a, left a bad taste in people's mouths in the first place, so it's really hard to just, like, you know, look at it in like a, a nice slide, be like, oh, this is not that bad. Most people are just gonna be like, I'd rather not do Ashron. <laughs> so, reason why they removed the 200 conquest cap for it. Now, my question is, do you think it was the human racial? Because the reason why they removed it, in a sense, first of all, people didn't want to go, second, Alliance had no longer queues, Horde is shorter queues, and then it's just, you know, uh, a mess once people get into Ashen, you know, some people sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but the most part of Alliance seems to have been winning them. Do you think uh, and like Ashen and the move of the common accused fixes a lot of things. First of all, people don't have to go there. Like that's a pretty neutral. Alliance don't don't have to wait forever to queue, so they just don't even have to go into Ashen. Mm -hmm. Second or uh, third, <coughs> uh, Alliance been winning Ashen or uh, as I seen for forms for majority of them, except for a few cases. Could it all be linked to the fact that, you know, people playing Alliance, not enough people playing Horde? I guess the question is, is the human racial really all that OP? I that's a good that's a very good question. And I, I think it comes down to perception versus reality. And it's the perception that that is the OP racial in the game. Is it the reality? Mm, maybe, maybe not. I think it largely depends on your class. There was a uh, somebody did a, the math about it. Uh, apparently, right now in Draenor, with the, uh, having like a, two Anya's trinkets or an Anya's proc, humans technically deal ten percent more damage in PvP. Technically, uh, I, yeah, I thought it was. I think are you talking about after they bumped that uh, trinket, uh, the 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 stats on that trinket by fifty percent, or before? Do you know when what that? Are you talking about the proc or the Anya's one? No, the the get out of get out of bad shit trinket get out of bad <laughs> that, shit that trinket. humans don't have. They propped uh, up the the baseline stats on that by 50%. yeah the versatility and Exit. crit right right yeah was was that ten percent prior to that that buff or after I that buff? I think I'm not sure at the moment actually. I think it was prior because okay. the the on use trinkets they made in one minute, so now both an alliance both horde and alliance can use them. Well, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you an example, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe maybe you know our viewers can catch up on their sleep if they hate history. But I think it's a great <laughs> example. World War II, um, the French, or should I say, at the end of World War One, the French were terrified that the Germans were going to invade their country again. So what they did uh, in the late twenties, early thirties, mid thirties, they went on this. They had this policy called the Maginot Line which essentially was these huge defense bunkers with massive super-powered cannons manned every, you know, couple of miles or so. I mean, it was a huge, huge project. It spanned 200 miles of this long wall bunkers and cannons, et cetera, et cetera. Really put it up there as a deterrence to the Germans. What ended, we all know what happened in World War II. France got their ass kicked. Sorry, French people. <laughs> but they got their ass kicked. That's just history. Why? Because Hitler and his Blitzkrieg went through Belgium. They completely avoided those cannons. Now, at the end of World War II, the Americans went to those cannons, and they tested them out on Panzer tanks. And they were able to take out a tank with one shot from a considerable distance. Hitler would have failed completely. His Blitzkrieg would have been a Blitz fail. He would have never gotten close. My point is, bigger damage isn't always better. And unfortunately, that's the perception of everybody in WoW. But the reality is, no. Proper planning and strategy will always beat out big damage. What's the point of having a DK on your team if he's CC 24-7 and completely taken out of the equation? Or or just, just whatever, the best geared class, best geared player, OP class, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. If you take out that player, that's strategy, that's proper planning, road blind. Followed by a poly, follow, you know, followed by a cyclone. He did nothing for, you know, 16 seconds easily. Uh -huh. 
that's my point. And unfortunately, a lot of people, oh, wow, it's like, it's all about the damage. It's all about the damage. No, it isn't. I play a shadow. I play a shadow priest as a main. Okay, I have a human shadow priest and I have a night elf shadow priest. The human shadow priest does do probably, like you said, around anywhere between ten and 15, to fifteen percent more damage. Mm-hmm. The night elf has that shadow meld, and and if you put my human priest in twos in arena, it's a nightmare because there's no question who they're focusing out of the gate. <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter who I'm with. <laughs> I'm getting focused out of the gate and I can't do shit most of the time if it's a double melee because mm-hmm. you know the person I'm with is usually playing with chopsticks okay <laughs> but as a night elf shadow priest different story come out of the gate pop a feather speeding around oh there's shadow priest spectral guy's shadow melt where'd he go <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. now it now it completely changes the dichotomy of the situation. So bigger damage isn't always better. Sometimes when you know how to use your utility better, it, it, it works in that slant. But regardless of whether you're going to follow perception or you're going to follow reality, the fact is people often choose, you know, put a check in perception. And the perception is every man for himself is overpowered. If I I noticed that there was a stat in a video I did where it showed the preferential race uh, races for PvP, humans came in at forty three percent, which and the second most played class in, in PvP were were night elves at eighteen, and third was undead at about nine. That's huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just absolutely huge. And and why is that? <laughs> because of that racial. And it's more perception than reality. Uh, you know, you have to understand, too, they buffed the other racials, too. I mean, they, they, they gave, like, a, li- a little bit of extra crit here, a little bit of extra haste there. Uh, you know, the, the dwarf racial got, you know, the stone form got a, got a bit of a buff. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, even the Jernai, they, you know, speeded up the heal because the heals were like, you know, tick. Yep. Three seconds later, <laughs> tick. It's just like you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> so, they definitely buffed the alliance across the board, but I think the biggest mistake Blizzard made was they prior to six point two. If I'm not mistaken, you can correct me if I'm wrong. They took the unused damage trinket for PvP, and they took it from a two minute cooldown to a one minute cooldown. They did. That is the current trinket and, right now. And if you notice the flux and the switch of queue times and skill players migrating to the alliance perfectly coincides with that change perception versus reality mm-hmm. kind of happy uh i always thought like oh it's be cool to work a blizzard right now it'll be the worst time to work a blizzard figuring this stuff out you know what i mean well i mean in fairness to blizzard <clears throat> and you know and i always try to be fair i might be mm-hmm. critical but i try to be fair i think the game engine limits them as to what it is that they want to do and what it is that they can do. Because you have to understand, even though they made updates over the years, the game engine is 12 years old. It goes back to the alpha, not to the launch. And in dog years, that's 84. <laughs> and, and, when you t- but, and, and But when you talk about technology, you have to kind of talk in dog years because you buy a computer, seven years later it's outdated easily, um, it, the technology ages a lot quicker than regular people or anything else in life. So you got to you have to understand that the game engine is amazingly old. I mean, you saw what they did with the character model upgrades. Yep. I mean, they look great. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody's going to find something they love about it or find something they hate. But overall, it looked it was a good move. It worked out. But compared to like a Guild Wars 2 or compared to a Final Fantasy... Or other MMOs, <laughs> you know, they didn't get bigger breasts or bigger booty. <laughs> There's just no way they're getting that. There's so many things that you can't control um, as far as as far as the customization of your characters. I don't think that's a big deal for me, but it is a big deal for a lot of people. And it's not a question of whether or not Blizzard wants to do it. I don't think the game engine can handle it. I'm not a computer programmer, but I'm really starting to think as they go more and more forward. It's going to gimp what it is that they want to do and what it is that they can do. Uh, I would have to agree with that. 
uh, taking, yeah. Oh, uh, I actually have no words other than I agree with it. There's literally nothing else I can add to it. Wow. I mean, I could be wrong. I'm not a programmer, but, you know, I played the game enough to kind of understand that, Yeah. that, um, you know, why is it that, you know, for, for all intents and purposes, Asher is kind of a Blizzard's answer to like a world versus world that both, I think, Elder Scrolls and Guild Wars 2 were trying to do. And yeah. why is it, as from a technical standpoint, Guild Wars and Elder Scrolls were able to streamline that and make it work, and yet WoW didn't? Definitely. That, like when the engine. Uh, yeah, I from, do. From, I mean, that's, that's the common denominator. It's got to be the engine. From playing Guild Wars 2, the world versus world, as hectic as it is, it's it has a solid engine to like make it work. Like it's, it's designed for the things that it's doing. You know, sieging walls, building areas, running in a zerg kind of deal. I mean, it's 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 not really like a war style scene. You're not really gonna get you know this war effect, but it is you know its own thing. You know, zerging and whatever it's mechanics of a game. Uh, but the game does have the engine to really make it run. Just the, the, the whole world PvP, I guess, experience. So that is true. That is true. The, the game engine could very much be a limiting factor, especially in Ashton and what they I do. I mean, I, you, I mean, if you look at what's going on in WAD, you know, the textures and the graphics, etc., while you're questing, it's got a better quality than, say, even MOP, let alone Lich King or Kata. It definitely yeah. does. It's noticeable. So they do make upgrades to the engine, but the, but the fact is... I think that that takes a lot of time, and I think that, you know, I I think that that could have been the main reason why Garrison's didn't work as smoothly as they wanted to, why their overall launch didn't work as smoothly as they wanted to, why Asheran didn't work as smoothly as they wanted to, just simply because the game engine is really starting to limit uh, what they can do and what they want to do. And I think it's honestly, if you look at the industry trends, there's Guild Wars 2. EverQuest is, you know, looking to put out its third expand, you know, its third, in, you know, game engine with EverQuest Next on top of EverQuest 2 and EverQuest 1. Uh, I, I just think that, you know, it's time for WoW 2. And unfortunately, I don't think Blizzard's going to be putting money into WoW. And I honestly can't blame them. Dollar, and if you have a car that's like 12 years old and transmission goes and the car's worth like say 2500 bucks and it's going to cost you 3000 to fix the transmission, are you going to buy a new car? I like how I like how very specific that was cuz that pretty much describes my last car. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not even joking. <laughs> Except the repair was about $500 and it was a 10-year-old car. We did decide to repair it. It broke down a week ago. Like the radio went. It was. It was. Oh junk. god, the radio would kill me. I just uh. put it in the car without a radio. No, it's not radio. It's the radiator. Oh, the radiator. It's like a split. <laughs> the radio. Like, no, 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 no. I no, throw no. the car away. With radio. <laughs> throw a car away with a radio. <laughs> uh, I don't sound like the most reasonable person ever. If that were true. Well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, the point is, is it, is it, yeah. is it financial, financially feasible for for Blizzard to consistently put more money into a game engine that's twelve years old? And the answer is no. And the way I, and the analogy I give is that analogy with a car. So I, this is the conundrum that Blizzard's left with. And when you start turning the page to this chapter, you got you got mixed feelings. Uh, people would love to see upgraded graphics in WoW and and have that experience to relive with better graphics that would i think a lot of people would sign off on that but then they lose their titles they lose their achievements they lose their mounts what can you keep what about this character that i played with for six years do i get to keep him can i bring him over is he max level is he start at level one just a lot of questions that that's going to split hairs and divide the community and it's a tough thing to hash out but if you look at the industry trends and you look at what other games have done, I do think this is inevitable. And I'm really starting to believe that the game engine is truly limiting what Blizzard wants to do and what they can do. I feel like with Ashen, even though the engine is limited, they just, I feel like even though they, they realize that it's limiting, they could have done something different off Ashen. Something with a different kind of maybe objective system, different kind of Different kind of whatever, different kind of really anything. Do you have any ideas uh, or any, any I, thoughts on I, what I tr I do? try to come up when I try to make this kind of examples. I try to come up with ideas. At the moment, I don't have anything right now. Um, 
because when I first looked at pictures of Ashran and I was thinking about it, I was actually thinking Ashran was going to be as big as Tan An, ta- as big as Tan An Jungle. Yeah, when it's I a first bit smaller it. than I expected it to be. <clears throat> yeah, it, it was before we saw like the map and actually get to try it in beta. I saw some pictures of some, I think a blood elf standing over a waterfall, and for some reason my mind was just like, it's going to be a huge zone with a lot of things to do, maybe like horde lines pushing areas, pushing borders. It's something that would, I guess, would help play up to the whole idea of horde versus alliance, the epic feel, rather than the epic, you know, mechanics and me- epic things happening, you know. Play up to the kind of imagination, like, you know, how a kid can, you know, take a cardboard box think he's a spaceship. <clears throat> they could have right. probably done something like that with Ashram with, like, some kind of storytelling elements or some kind of event mechanics That would have been interesting, in yeah. I, 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 think, I think that that would have given it, um, given it more legs, given it, made uh-huh. people a little bit more interested, uh, kind of lick your finger, turn the page kind of thing. Uh-huh. And, uh, and that's clearly what it's missing. Um, uh, what Ashram really appears to be in my opinion is it appears to be a mechanism to persuade pveers into pvp because there's just so many pve elements and so many yeah. things that are just very raid oriented and blizzard is at a bit of a conundrum right here because the reality is i i'm just throwing numbers here but i'd say about 65 percent of the player base are focused on raiding and 35% are focused on PvP. You could split hairs and say 60-40, but I think that I'm in the ballpark there. Mm-hmm. And while their current game model and their current core of players are PvE-oriented, that's what they want, that's what they love, that's what Blizzard do be- does best and what they focus mainly on. That's now. The future... I'm sorry, guys, who <laughs> love killing dragons, but the future's PvP. And the reason I say that, Blizzard loves money. Money is where esports is. Esports yep. is where money is. And Blizzard needs to move in that direction to get that money. Blizzard loves money. They love money more than a fat kid loves chocolate. Who doesn't? They do, Who doesn't, exactly. But Blizzard's willing to slash and burn and, and compromise the integrity of their game to get their hands on an extra quarter, okay? There's a little bit of a difference there. I think what they were trying to do with Asheran was <clears throat> have that melting pot for hardcore raiders to kind of get, them, get themselves, get their feet wet in PvP and try something new. And it didn't work out. And my guess is they're not going to change the dynamics of World of Warcraft whether it's WoW 2 or totally revamp PvP or totally eliminate the progressive system in PvP. They're not going to do that until they have a clear sign that both Heroes of the Storm and Overwatch are going to fail as esports. Because if those two ventures fail, they have no other choice but to take their flagship game and make it a, a uh, esport. Another thing that came up while we were talking about Ashen Lake how it uh, got a bunch of PVE elements into it and kind of to get PVEers on board with it. Mm-hmm. When I thought about the events, like, the, you know, there's five events. There's the uh, quarry, there's the races, there's the burial grounds, there's the mines now, and then fires. And then I thought to myself, for a PvP playground, that they call it, who the fuck wants to go running around collecting mines? Ores. Collecting ores and put them in, in, in a, uh, a card. That doesn't sound like a PvP activity. Or play Ghostbusters, sucking in ghosts into like a <laughs> gun thing. Let alone, I mean, killing. He slime me. me. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can go down to mines, kill these uh, bird spirit people, but is that really PvP? I, not really. You can go into races, yeah. You you know you go five five rounds around the thing, and with the races with your guy, and you can stop the other faction from doing that. I guess that's part of PvP, but you're not really doing a PvP activity. You're just getting thrown in an area where you should be competing against the other faction. So I guess, I don't know, but I feel like they should have given more PvP objectives to it. I think you hit the nail on the head, because that's one of the things that really dissuaded me from being involved with Asheran in any capacity in the beta or even live when it first came out, because there was really no cut-and-dry strategy or objectives. It was really pretty much a Zerg fest. That's why it's, it seems clearly to me that this was Blizzard's attempt to try to get PvEers into PvP because of all those PvP uh, PvE elements mm-hmm. into it. I, I wanted to ask you a question because um, yeah. I know that you've been playing... How long have you been playing WoW? Uh, 
playing WoW since end of Kata, been playing Rogue since beginning of Mr. Pandari, season 12, um, mid-season 12, it's like when you could upgrade your PvP gear, that's where I started playing Rogue. I would say that's really the time when I started playing WoW, but Cataclysm, end of that. So you never really, <clears throat> you never really experienced Wintergrasp? No, I experienced a bit of Talbarat. Right, so I was going to say, off. how would you compare the good, the bad, and the ugly with Tolbarad and Asheran. Well, Tolbarad, I felt like it was, I guess, you know, it's your. <clears throat> Tolbarad was like your, you know, objective kind of area. You got to capture the flag, or wins gets points. And it was an area like you, you have the three points, and you would hope that both the Horde and Alliance would go there, and then they would just clash in the epic PvP battle. But the objective was to hold the flag. At least, I don't know, I felt like that was more PvP based because we get that in Battlegrounds as is. You know, so you have to strategize, like, how many people you send, how many you defend with. Lag, uh, lag kind of ruined it a bit, and all you can get there is honor points, so like conquest wasn't really that need. For Ashwin, they pretty much did the same thing, uh, where well, they would just you know put an objective, hoping that the blue and the red would clash together. But the things you were doing in there weren't really PvP based, or it didn't feel PvP based. And unless like Tolbarad, hold an objective felt kind of PvP based. Winter Grasp, though, I saw only I only saw the things, and that's the things I only could dream Ashwin could have been. Siege engines, you know, mowing down the the gates, t breaking down the walls, trying to get inside an area that the other faction was trying to, I guess, protect. Correct me if I'm wrong about Runegrass. Just... Yeah, no, that's that's what it was, definitely. <clears throat> yeah, it just seemed interesting. It was like what Guild Wars 2 brings, but just very vehicle-based, not as much like foot soldier kind of base, because you needed the vehicles to break down those walls. Mm -hmm. It was like no easy way. You couldn't just, you know, get a bunch of guys to start PvEing the door, and the other faction just like, you know, throwing down a... Uh, uh, or oil and then just sets it on fire or something. You know, I'm thinking Guild War stuff again. But uh, Well, I mean, I think you know, Guild War stuff is a very appropriate, you know, analogy because I, I Blizzard definitely took a page out of Guild Wars, uh, Guild Wars 2 when they came up with Asheran. Uh, they, they tried to have a response to what Guild Wars 2 was doing with a world versus world. And it's actually world versus world versus world. <laughs> you know, to really confuse people. My my thoughts, and I like I said earlier, I could be a hundred percent wrong, but my thoughts is that the current game engine and WoW could couldn't really execute that, even if they wanted to. So why did they even bother doing it? That's the question. Because I think they had to know that they couldn't execute it. And this is a problem they're gonna be facing more and more as they move forward. I mean I'm completely fine with Blizzard trying new things. I I get excited when they're trying to make someone new, someone edgy, something that just, you know, they haven't done before. You just never know if it's going to come out right or wrong. Everybody is happy if it's like the greatest thing in the world. Everybody is ecstatic. But everybody is just going to boo the loo and fuck out of it as soon as it's bad, When it, if, if, it, if it really is bad. And Ashwin just mm. could have been something cool. We didn't know what they were... Maybe, I don't you're know. right. I, I, you're right. I, it really could have been something cool. I, I really I, do think there's something there. But you know, when it goes live, that's not the time to start tweaking and tinkering with things yeah, to make it better. It, it should have been it should have been done much sooner. It should have been more streamlined and more more prepared. I feel like everything that we could have said about Ashen has been said in more detail, and we even covered a bunch of more other topics that could have even amassed to the uh, the the fail that ends up being Ashen. So I guess the uh, to wrap up the thoughts. Uh, you like the Ashen currently as it is right now. Yeah, right. I do. I, I admit it's. You know what it's like. I'll, I'll yeah. tell you exactly what it's like. You know, you ever walk down the street and you see and you see a twenty dollar bill, mm -hmm. and you bend down and it's really only a dollar bill. <laughs> you get you get that like surge of disappointment a little bit, but it's still a dollar. Mm -hmm. You know that that's how I feel about Asheran. That's that's a great way to describe the feel of it currently. Uh, would you run it currently for any of your characters, for gear or conquest? Uh, probably not. Uh, if I had a new character, like if I just, you know, decided I wanted to play a Shadow Priest as a different race or suddenly had a hankering to play a Shaman, don't know why I would, <laughs> but <laughs> just decided I want to play a Shaman, I would definitely gear that character in Ashran. I'd endure the 20-minute, hour-long, whatever queue just to get in there because I know I could get full honor gear plus some conquests within two three hours uh so i would definitely go that route but given a choice i'd prefer to do rbgs arena or bgs any day of the week over asheran as much as i like to go in there and as much as i like leading and when you do you know get the events done and you get leader done you overcome the the masses of horde 
I, I was, I'm probably just going to do uh, arenas because Ashen is just inconvenient to queue into. There is a good thing about this, uh, Dalaran. I, I do mm -hmm. see a very, very positive effect of this because Asheran the whole time is kind of like going into a steakhouse, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Big steak. I love steak, right? Big steak eater. I love steak. And I don't have it as much as I want to, but whatever. <laughs> you go to a steakhouse. What do you expect to get? You know, you don't go to a steakhouse and say, I'll have fish, <laughs> you know, or, or I'll have. You don't go to a steakhouse and do that. Just like you don't go to a seafood place and say, can I have a hot dog? Oh, my God. Seafood place and asking for a burger. Yeah. Can I have a burger? Jesus you want a Christ. shrimp burger? No, I just want a hamburger. Break it. <laughs> you don't do that, right? My point is you don't go to a steakhouse. And you go there. You go there for steak, right? So, you, so you mm -hmm. go there, and the waiter says, "Can I take your order?" And you say, "Yeah, I'd like to have, uh, you know, the fourteen ounce sirloin steak, you know, beer, fries, whatever." Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the waiter looks at you and says, "We have chicken." No, no, I don't want chicken. I came here to get a steak. Uh, that's what I want. I want the fourteen ounce sirloin steak. And the waiter says, "Yeah, but, but we have chicken." <laughs> and this goes on for like an hour. This is Blizzard ram, ramming and force-feeding Asheran down people's throats. We have chicken. Asheran is chicken. The steak is arena, BGs, RBGs, what people would, who are PvPers prefer to do, even world PvP. That's mm -hmm. what they would prefer, given a choice. And Blizzard's just like, but we have chicken. But we, and they just kept ramming it down people's throat, and they didn't listen. And now, when they take this conquest away... If what I perceive to be the effect comes into play, which is it becomes a ghost town, I think Blizzard just has to turn their heads and say, they have to look at it and say, we were wrong. And realize that maybe the players know what they want, especially the PvPers. And maybe that would make them, as a result, more tuned to what we say and what suggestions we make. I mean, because they can't help but look at this and say... Once it's a ghost town and say, yeah, we failed. How could you How could you put a bow on that? <laughs> you know, there's really no way you can do it. So I do think that it's got a potential good here. And hopefully they they will see it this way and realize like, yeah, the player base hated this. <laughs> this was a bad idea. And we're going to, you know, this is, you know, we're the Titanic. Asher ends an iceberg. <laughs> don't, you know, don't get on board. That's basically it. I mean... I, I feel bad for anybody who was, like, on a dev team designing the Ashran, how it would function, and what if they were just so excited, like, oh, they're gonna love it, and now it's just like, well, that was the best I could come up with. Uh, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I'm, just, I'm just hoping this will be a, a, an awesome learning experience for whoever, you know, it was in, in charge of designing Ashran. Well, that would be Brian Holink, I believe. <laughs> I don't want to name any names, but... <laughs> It rhymes he's, with... He's, yeah, he, no, his name is definitely linked to everything PvP-related, and Ashran being, like, what it pushed for. Yeah, I, feel I like mean, he might not be name... the idea man. Uh, no, but attached to his name... Stuff, to... But he's the yeah. guy that, you know, signs off on the ideas. No his, doubt. his name is on name tag. It, now, there's a job I don't it. want. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, here's a guy. I mean, there's not many people that have him on their Christmas list right now. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> Alrighty, well, I think uh, that's that's really it. We covered everything when it, in terms of Ashran and the question, is it failing? And uh, the answer is kind of simple. Yeah, it's an affirmative nod, say. yes. Our prediction, Ashran will be a ghost town. Thanks for playing. <laughs>